By the end of this video, you're going to know which no-code AI automation platform is best for you depending on your situation and your budget. Because I'm going to be comparing N8N, Make.com, and Zapier in order to see which one's the best. We're going to be looking at their pricing, easy use, functionality, and at the end of this video, I'm going to reveal which one I would recommend that you use if you're a beginner that's looking to learn how to build out AI automations without having a code. Okay, now the first thing that we need to compare all three of these on when it comes to pricing is whether or not they have a free trial or some free option to get started with. So if we come over to Make, we could see we could get started with Make for free. It shows us everything that is actually included here. We could see that it doesn't actually give you access to all of their different apps. If you want those priority apps, you are going to have to actually increase your subscription here. And 8 n also has a free trial with everything and it doesn't require a credit card except for a free trial with a business plan and if we come over to Zapier they also have a free trial that you can get started with and you can see that it gives you access to a bunch of different things. Now in terms of actually pricing these out you need to make sure that you're paying attention to really two core things. One how many credits you're going to get and how many tasks that actually allows you to automate but then two whether or not any of these have any hidden costs. When it comes to something like make.com, there really aren't any hidden costs associated. This is going to allow you to easily get started right here. You could begin paying monthly, and if you need more credits, you can always upgrade in the future. Now, actually doing something, how many credits that takes, is going to depend on what action you are actually taking. So if you have a really long prompt in one of your AI agents, it could actually end up in you taking a lot of credits in order to do something that really only had like one or two moving parts into it. When we move over to something like N8N, this kind of has a similar thing to it because if you look at something like business, you're going to see that this is self-hosted and what this doesn't actually show you is to use a tool like N8N really powerfully, you're going to have to pay somebody that's technical or you're going to have to hire somebody that's technical in order to actually have them in your instance actually automating things for you. In fact, this is one of the number one complaints that I see about N8N, both for people trying to automate their work or businesses trying to automate their work. In fact, they also just changed the way that their pricing is. And if you come over to the YouTube video about it, it's actually pretty crazy what the comments are under here. So first they get you hooked, then they go for the jugular, people are really disappointed, and people just aren't happy with what it is. And you can see right here that this comment right here pretty much sums it up. They're also expecting you to hire developers with AI experience well below the market rate. So what does that mean? That they expect you to hire people to actually run N8N for you. Now Zapier is going to be very similar to Make where you don't have to hire anybody. It doesn't matter if you're technical. There are no hidden fees when it comes to Zapier and taking actions costs the credit and that's it. It's not going to cost you additional things or it's not going to actually cause some fluctuation in the cost depending on what you're actually getting done. Like I was saying with Make, if you have it run a really large prompt or something like that, the pricing gets out of control really quickly. But with Zapier, it's incredibly transparent. The price is what it is and you will actually be able to bake in upfront, okay, this is how much it's gonna cost me to run Zapier versus on Make or NA in, you might have a lot more trouble doing that. They might seem like they're cheaper options just on the pricing page right here. But like I'm saying, that's not always what ends up happening once you get everything hooked up. But that's not the only thing we need to look at because not all these tools are created equal when it comes to ease of use. Now in terms of ease of use, there's a clear winner here and I think this is gonna be very obvious to you after looking at how you actually build out automations on these three platforms. For starters, let's start with Make. You come over here, click on Create a Scenario and then you need to add in a trigger. So they have a bunch of different things that you can actually go through here. For example, let's say that we were going to build something to watch for a on Instagram, we could come over here and watch events and then this is going to be a trigger. And then from here, we just add in more modules off of this until we have actually built something out. So if we come over here, I'm gonna show you a scenario that I actually made on here that uses Instagram. If we come over here, we could see that this will watch for when somebody comments on my Instagram page, it will then send that comment to ChatGPT and it will create a reply to that and then it will actually put that reply on Instagram. 
So this is a bot right here that automatically replies to Instagram comments. Now, one thing that I do find kind of easy with Make is if you come over here, you will be able to see that you can import blueprints. So if you find a template or something like that, and they have a bunch of different templates over here that you can go through, you can very easily import that in here and then just connect into all your different accounts. And it's really easy to get it set up with simple automations and make. If we come over to something like N8N, this is going to be a little bit different. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna click on create workflow right here. And this is gonna bring up something kind of similar to make, but we could see that there are a bunch of different triggers here. For example, I am going to do trigger manually. And then from here, we just go through and add things in. Now. This is a little bit more confusing because you have to click into each of these to actually see what actually shows up here. And you could see that there are pre-built agents or you can custom build your own. But really one of the biggest things here that I have to say under easy use is this doesn't make it very clear to me like exactly what I should do. Now, one thing that they do do kind of well, I don't just want to pick on make, is executions and evals. These are pretty good that they have, and it makes it really easy for you to be able to figure out why your situation isn't working or something like that. But in terms of actually building things out, it's pretty difficult. They also have a template section right here that you can come over here and actually go through this. But again, a lot of this are going to be template tutorials and not just pre-built agents that you can import straight into your instance. Now, when we come over to Zapier, this is incredibly easy to use. If we come over to Zaps right here, you can see that we could just come over here, click on create, and then from here, we click on new Zap, and we could do two things. One, we could build this out really easily in the UI that they have right here, or we could describe exactly what we wanted to create, and it will actually go off and do that. For example, let's say that we wanted this to send us a message on Slack when somebody specifically emails us, we could set that up. So we could say something along the lines of, I want to get notified on Slack when I get emails from specific emails. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to bring up this co-pilot right here, which is amazing because Make doesn't have one, N8N doesn't have one, but Zapier does have one, and this helps you think through and build out exactly what you need to do. So this will actually go through and suggest exactly what you should be building out, and we could see that this is now taking action here. And then literally all we have to do is just come over here, connect our accounts, click the action events, click what we want to happen and actually fill this in. And again, we have this co-pilot here the entire time to help us walk through if we get stuck with anything. In addition to that, if we come over here, you're going to see under discover that they have a bunch of different templates. In fact, you can search for templates right here and find templates for pretty much anything. In addition to that, if you come over into app connections, you can see where all your app connections are. And if you wanted to add one, you'll be able to scroll through more than 7,000 different apps that you can connect to on Zapier. Now let's get into what really separates these tools, which is functionality, because this is where most people get stuck. Now in terms of actually judging this on functionality, I think there are three things that we need to hone in on. The first one is going to be what kind of triggers can we set up with these? The second is going to be what kind of apps can we integrate with this? And then third, how flexible is it to actually change things out here? So if we come over here and we create a new scenario, I'm going to show what triggers are on make. So if we click on this right here, we could see that there will be a bunch of different triggers whenever we search for something. For example, if we search for Gmail right here, you will be able to see, watch, these are going to be things that will actually trigger. If we come over to something like Slack, we're going to see the same exact thing. In addition to that, you can trigger this on time or just trigger it in order to run manually. And when it comes to N8N, if we come over here and we create a new workflow, you will be able to see that they actually have their triggers pretty easily defined right here. So you could trigger on an app event, on a schedule, on a webhook call, on a form submission, when executed by another workflow, on a chat message, when running an evaluation, or they do have other ways. So there are a lot of flexibility inside of N8N when it comes to triggers. Now, if we come over to Zapier and we come back into home over here, click on zaps, we're going to click on create, we're going to click on new zap, we could very easily click in a trigger right here. And we can see all of the different triggers that 
we will be able to use. In fact, if we had one that we wanted to look at, for example, I am going to pull up texting. We'll type in texting right here, and we'll be able to see all the ones that we are able to use inside of Zapier. And if something doesn't have a trigger available, it will literally tell you right here that there's no trigger available. So if we come over here, we could browse through apps, we could browse through AI, flow controls, utilities, products, we could browse through all of this. Now, in terms of integrations, Zapier has more than 7,000 different integrations. Make.com has like 2,000 different integrations, and N8N only has around 500 integrations. So in terms of who has the best integrations, it's gonna be Zapier, and then Make, and then N8N. And something that I would strongly suggest that you do as you're going through actually trying to figure out which one of these tools that you wanna use is go to their website and actually see whether or not they have the integrations that you want. For example, if we come over to Zapier, you will be able to very quickly find out whether or not they have integrations for whatever you are trying to do. You can come over here, click on this. In fact, they have more than 8,000 app connections and you can search for the apps straight on here. With the other tools, they hide it. And the reason that they hide it is because they don't have anywhere near as many integrations. And then in terms of actual flexibility, I would say that honestly, all three of these are incredibly flexible. You're just gonna come into whatever you have built out. You could change it however you want right inside of here. You could do the same exact thing in NADN. You just come over here and change it. You could do the same thing in Zapier. So all three of these kind of have the same flexibility in my opinion. The part where they really differ is really just going to be on those integrations. They all have amazing triggers, they have amazing flexibility, but with integration, Zapier is a clear winner. Now, of course, if you spent any time using AI tools, you know that you're inevitably gonna get stuck and you're gonna wanna make sure that you can get support from the company that you're using when you do get stuck. So let's see how good their support is. Okay, so when it comes to getting help inside of each of these, we could see that inside of Make, they do have that you can ask AI down here. So they kind of have an AI assistant right here, but it can't actually help you create things the same way that Zapier's can. But this is really, really helpful if you need help with an error or explaining a result, or if you wanna ask it something, or if you wanna create some type of mapping or something like that, this is incredibly helpful. But one thing I would note is that you only have a certain number of calls, and if you want to do more calls, they do charge you, but it's great that you can come over here and actually upload things to this, which does make it a little bit easier. In addition to that, they have a really, really easy way for you to find a bunch of different resources right here, and if that doesn't solve your problem, you could come over here to help where you could actually get help you could hire an expert you could go through the make academy or they also have a really helpful community now if we come over into n8n right here and we need help we're going to have to come over to help right here and we're going to have to go through the documentation a form we'll have to report a bug or if we click right here they also do have an ai assistant right here that you can ask most of your questions about building workflows in N8N, but again, this won't actually take action for you. Now, if we come over to Zapier, they have a few different ways for you to get help. Like I showed you earlier, they have this Copilot AI beta right here. They also have this chat right here that you can go through and chat with, or you could even search your community straight from inside of here, which is incredibly helpful. So, in terms of actually getting help with all three of these tools, I kind of think that they're pretty equal. Zapier's Copilot is a huge advancement in terms of functionality, but in terms of getting help, all of them have these AI chats that you can chat with, you can upload photos to them, and you can get help pretty much any time that you need. Now, when it comes to which of these three tools I would recommend, here's what I'd say. Zapier is best for enterprises and business teams that want fast, time to value, predictable costs, and the easiest path to getting AI workflows into your organization. Now, make.com appeals to smaller teams who want flexibility at a lower price point, but can tolerate complexity. And then N8N fits technical teams that value self-hosting and control, but are willing to shoulder hidden infrastructure and DevOps costs. So after reviewing and knowing my audience, I would recommend that you probably go with Zapier. And you're welcome to try it for free or read more about it at the pinned comment below. Also, just a heads up that starting last week, Zapier now bundles Zaps, Tables, Interfaces, and MCP 
into every plan. And this gives you everything that you need to build complete AI powered systems free of having to add things on. And another thing that I really love about Zapier is you can find pretty much a template for any use case that you want, either on their website or by doing a simple Google search. Now, if you like this video, I'd strongly suggest you check out this video right here that walks you through five Zapier automations I'd strongly suggest you set up today.